Hello, dear viewer. Welcome again to our experience of 40 days of prayer. If you're joining us for the first time, just to let you know that the General Conference of the Adventist Church came up with this very wonderful, inspiring program where all the members of the church globally have been requested to team up in prayer from 3rd of, of, of May and all through for the next 40 days. And today being the third day of May, in these four days of prayer, we thank the Lord for the privilege and opportunity to be at his feet. I welcome you this morning, uh, maybe wherever you're watching from, it could be evening or afternoon, but where we are this morning, we welcome you that you be part of this great um, experience of uh, fellowshipping and being refreshed from the Lord. This day, uh, the thought is revival and reformation. We have so far looked at revival of true godliness. We, yesterday we looked at a humility, a seeking and turning. And this morning we are looking at revival and reformation. But before we get to the text that we are going to use this morning, I'm so happy to be joined with one of my church members, uh, Brother John, who is just briefly here to share with us his experience as a, as a Christian and, and, and as a prayer warrior and what prayer can do in one's life. Uh, John, I welcome so much. I'm glad to have you this morning. Uh, please, you can begin by greeting uh, our viewers. Good morning, viewers. Uh, good afternoon from wherever it is that you're watching us. I hope you're glad to be with us today. Thank you, thank you so much. Now, how did you come to learn about the 40 days of prayer? Well, Pastor, I was actually just walking on YouTube, rather than browsing through YouTube, and uh, I saw the post that had been put up the first day, and I went back to the church website and just saw that there's this whole 40 days of prayer. That's how I actually bumped into the 40 days of prayer. Wow, wow. Now, for those of you who um, you know, interested and okay with um you know online services and uh, internet and all that you know you can spend your time in a reasonable way it was just uh, through youtube and it came to discover that we have actually started our programs through the 40 days of prayer so you can also check these programs are uh, on our website uh, they are from the, the central church uh, nairobi central sd church you, you can go to our website and you can see you will be able to get all the videos for this program but today uh, john um what do you say about prayer do you believe in prayer actually yes i do believe in prayer pastor um prayer for me personally i have had very many uh, uh, experiences through prayer that the lord has come through for me mm. uh right from a young age uh in church i remember i would pray over things like exams and the lord was faithful and he's constantly been faithful through my campus life into my work life during covid season when things were tough mm. i remember and at one point you get to a point where you surrender fully and you tell god you know what i'm going through this i don't know how you're going to do it but i know you will do it therefore i leave this in your hands and he has come through so many times. I cannot keep count uh, in terms of health, finances, many, many ways. So I do believe in prayer. Wow, very powerful. John says, yeah, he believes in the power of prayer and he has experienced the power of prayer in his life. Now, that's the reason why this morning we can put a little longer, you know, to wait upon the Lord and ask him and seek him. But before we have time to pray, uh, I'll be inviting Brother John to come and join us in prayer. But before we get there, let's go to the text of this morning that the Lord may bless us together. Now, um, I want to invite you to come along with me and we are going this morning. Of course, the text that we are sharing uh, is uh, from the book of uh, Revelation and very, very important text that, um, that you know, Jesus uh, speaking to us and requesting us. Uh, Revelation chapter 3, verse number 20. And the word of God says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, will come in to him and eat with him and he with me. Now, as I said, the topic for this morning or this uh, that day of our 40 days of prayer is revival and reformation and what this means yesterday and the, the first day we so much looked on the aspect of revival and so we are getting to the aspect of reformation reformation simply means to undo a certain things in your life you know to to do away with certain things and embrace new ways of life this is what we call reform now when revival comes it asks to act and move you 
to denounce certain ways of your life that then you can be aligned with the will of God. Now, there is one uh, more text that I want to read, uh, the book of Romans chapter 12 and verse number uh, 1 and 2, but I'm interested with verse number 2, but let me begin from verse number 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. But number two, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, reformation is as a result of revival. We saw revival comes because of the power of the Holy Spirit. When you allow the Holy Spirit to be in you, the Holy Spirit has a way of causing revival, rejuvenizing you, re-energizing you, reconnecting you with God, re-centering you where Christ needs you the most. And when that starts happening, then there are certain ways you start behaving and your behavior changes and you start embracing new attitudes and your perception about life and about God and get more interested and yearning for salvation. Now, Paul here comes and says, when this power of the Holy Spirit comes in, also works in us to transform us, it transforms us. How? It transforms us by renewing our minds, by renewing how we think, by renewing how we look at things, by renewing our appetites, our connection with the Lord, by renewing of our mind. So that, you know, mind is the center of life. Everything comes through mind. We are what we are because of what comes into our mind. And so when the power of the Holy Spirit descends in us and set, takes the central place in our life, then we being transformed and changed in our mind, the way we think, and we are start aligning our desires with the will of God. And so he says, by renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. To mean that you will not be able to accept, you be, you, you, you won't be able to, uh, to, 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 you know, to prove what is good and what is not good if you do not get revived. You know, it doesn't matter how many sermons you listen to. If you don't allow the workings of the power of the Holy Spirit in your heart, in your life, you won't know how to be revived. And so if you're not revived, then you can understand why and how you can transform your life. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that transforms our lives. And so the text here this morning is very, very important for us. Now, allow me to end by reading a quote from um, Ellen G. White. I, 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 I love his other. Uh, yesterday, of course, I, I read one more quote from her and allow me this um, morning one more time to read from uh, the Selected Messages book 1 page 128. Remember I read from 1, 121. But allow me to read this. A revival and reformation must take place under the ministration of the Holy Spirit. Revival and reformation are two different things. Eh. <clears throat> revival signifies renewal of spiritual life, a quickening of the powers of mind and heart, a resurrection from spiritual death. But reformation signifies a reorganization. Mm -hmm. Reorganization of your life, reorganization of your thoughts, reorganization of your, you know, the attitudes and perceptions about life, reorganization, a change in ideas and theories, habits and practices. A reformation will not bring forth the good fruit of righteousness unless it is connected with the revival of the spirit. So revival and reformation are to do their appointed work in doing this work they must do. Led. And so we are this morning seeking to ask God to help us to undo certain things, to remove things that are not good. And, you know, those kind of sins that easily entangles and snares and keeps us, you know, sunk in sin. Those are the things we're looking at. I want to challenge you this morning as we pray. What, how is your life? Are there certain things in your life you need to undo, to, to change, to remove, to throw away? Please. That's why we are here this morning. As, as I invite Brother John to come and join me at, for this very uh, special moment of prayer, is my desire that wherever you are this morning, not just pray, but seek through this prayer to 
and do certain things, to change certain things, to, 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 to transform your way of looking at life and come closer to God and, and surrender certain things to him and count them nothing if you really want to win the salvation. And we have a number of prayer requests that we have, are having uh, this morning. Uh, we are going to consider together with your concerns. I see, uh, John, if you can check through, uh, I, I see we have to pray for God to give you a heart that is willing to live in complete obedience to his will. We are also going to pray for victory over those specific sins that you still struggle with. Uh, we are also going to pray for any young people and believers you know who are struggling from addiction, depression, or other mental health issues. We are also going to pray for our church members uh, here in Nairobi Central Church in this part of the country, but also specifically been requested to pray for the church in Eastern Europe, where there are many challenges, as we have said, that God would intervene and be glorified in this ongoing painful crisis. Um, uh, John, what other prayers can we pray for? We are also supposed to pray for believers who are facing religious persecution right now in areas such as Asia and the Middle East. And also there's a list that we're supposed to come up with, Pastor, mm -hmm. of seven names yes. that we need to continuously pray for over the last, over the next that seven days. Wow, thank you. So join us uh, as we pray for these things. You may not remember everything, but I know we have mentioned them. The Lord is aware of these. But we want to request you to have a list of just seven friends or people that you want to be praying for in this experience so that, that every day as you join us, it will be your privilege to lift them before the Lord. We are going together to pray with Brother John. He is going to start. Uh, then I'm going to end the prayer. Let's pray together wherever you are. Let's believe and pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. We thank you for the gift of life. We thank you, dear Lord, because you have always been faithful. Father, and especially we want to, first of all, confess our sins that they may not be a hindrance to the requests that are being made. Dear Lord, we'd like to bring before you all your children across the world, dear Lord. We want to pray that those who are yearning for the Holy Spirit to come into their lives, dear Lord, that they may be able to keep away from certain struggles that they're going through, be it things like addiction, be it mm. disobedience, dear Lord, be it be issues of even family relationships, dear mm. Lord, be it finances, dear Lord, anything that is making them not behave in a way that gives glory to you, dear Lord, I pray that may you give them a special um, dosage of your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that it may enable them because they can do all things to Christ who strengthens them. Amen. Dear Lord, we want to remember our young people. Father, we'd like to remember young people in Kenya who are going into the various uh, high schools. I pray, dear Lord, that may you hold them steadfast, dear Lord, that they may not interact with bad company, that they may keep their good mm. morals, yes, dear Lord. Lord, that they will be examples like the four Hebrew boys amongst their peers, and mm. they make show and shine up, and that when people see them, they will see you, dear Lord. Yes, Lord. We want to remember our fellow believers and your children across the world who are out in Eastern Europe, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we pray for a speedy resolution to what is going on in that part of the world. And dear Lord, we pray for peace and a way through the war that is going on, dear Lord. Mm -hmm. We want to pray for those who are mourning. We pray for comfort of their hearts, dear Lord. For those who are fearful, we pray for courage as well, dear Lord, that your will may be done in that part of the world. Mm -hmm. Dear Lord, the children across this globe who are struggling with various needs, they really are seeking your face. I pray that, dear Lord, reach out to them. Yes, Lord. Hold their hands. Mm. Remind them that you're with them even in the middle of the storm. Mm. If you cannot calm the storm, I pray that may you calm your child within the storm. Mm. May they always look to you and know that the Lord is with me. The yes, Lord. Lord is with us. Mm. And therefore, we will always trust in him. Yes, Lord. I pray this short prayer, trust and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Lord, we continue to thank you this morning. Thank you for the privilege of this fellowship together with you. Thank you because you promised us whenever we come to you in prayer, you shall answer our prayers according to the riches in glory. We thank you, Lord, this morning one more time that we can present our petitions before you. Forgive our sins, Lord, and cleanse us from all ways of our unrighteousness. And Lord, accept us before you, together with our viewers, that we will have an experience with you. We want to lift each one of us today before you, Lord. Wherever our viewers are, Lord, we want to reach out to them this morning, this very uh, special moment, that you can meet them at their very point of needs. You know the struggles, you know the challenges, and specifically today when you're focusing on reforms, many of us are struggling with the reforms, some habits that have not worked well, 
things and habits that are challenging and choking our faith. We are struggling with them, Lord. We don't know how to do. But this morning, you are reminding us. We can surrender such things to you because you have the power through the Holy Spirit to enable us to overcome. Mm -hmm. I know it won't be possible for us to walk a faithful and righteous way without accepting painfully to go the route of reforms. And so we are seeking this morning, Lord, for certain ways in our lives to be aligned with your will. That as we worship you and sit before you, that our conscience will be true and we shall be at peace with you. So, Lord, forgive us and give us the power, the indwelling power of the Holy Spirit, who is able to work within us and for us to overcome every tendency and every habit to break down the chains of the bondage of evil one and the sin. The Lord, we can live a righteous life in this age. We want to remember, remember the church here, um, the Nairobi Central Church, the church in Kenya. In this country, Lord, we, and we need you this time. I know, especially both this country and, and our church, we are in the season of elections. And Lord, we are praying that your spirit shall guide every thought and every step and every will and every decision that everything shall happen according to their will. And especially for the country, Lord, we pray as we come to our general elections that this exercise will be covered through peacefully. You shall give us leaders that you are purpose to gain this country. We pray even for our church globally, the general conference session, which is soon coming in a few days from now. The Lord, you shall provide, give the church leaders who are meek in their spirit, leaders who are humbled before you, men and women after your own heart, men and women who shall learn how to hear and listen and do what you gain them to do. Remember the church in Eastern Europe, Lord, that you may continue blessing them, intervening in the situations of life and give them peace that even the struggles of this world one day shall come to an end. Bless us, Lord, and continue giving us this privilege of fellowshipping together. Remember, Brother John, I pray for him in that very special way this morning, Lord. Thank you for allowing him to come to be part of this ministry. Reach out to him and bless him and fulfill the desires of his heart. But more importantly, Lord, I pray that we can prepare him for the soon coming. Bless this ministry of prayer. Bless our church. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, dear viewer, for being part of this ministry. We pray for you. Please, if you are being blessed, I invite you to do one thing. If you have not clicked the button of subscribing to our channel, please do. But I also I invite you to like our, our website and also share this link as, with many people as you can, that many will be blessed of you. May the Lord bless you. Till tomorrow. May God be with you. <laughs>